I'm just going to have a little bit more tea. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, uh, so a couple of these have issues with the lips. Uh, maybe not this one. This one's really cute. Um, but two of these have real issues with the lips. This one has a bit of an issue with the light environment and texture and the head size and the neck, uh, neck width. Um, and this one, it's really cool. It's got a little bit of subsurface scattering in it. It looks like he's made out of wax and it looks like he's directly out of Hey Arnold. Um, I swear to God, this character, I know it from something. Probably Hey Arnold. I, I really don't remember. Um, the character themselves, I'm not sure uh, if I would put them in an illustration, but uh, an illustration is usually used as some kind of showcase for an important character, for some kind of uh, event, for some kind of action or narrative. It doesn't seem like much is happening. It seems like one frame in a conversation in a comic book, then something to fully render. Um, something else needs to be happening in the image, that's why it feels a little empty. The character themselves is very, very intriguing. And part of the character's design or the characterization is in the gesture of the arms. And they're completely stiff and static. So maybe if he was like fidgeting around with some potions. Like he reminds me of Twitch from League of Legends. Maybe he was fidgeting around with like a big potion. And he's some sort of potion master. And he's like this evil villain. And he's like ready to uncork it. And it's uh, just like a big potion that he's messing around with. Um, if you had a little bit more space, you can show like some more of his, I don't know, his, his lab and more stuff that he messes around with in his lab, maybe some kind of, some kind of underground lab that he has. You see all this graffiti in the background and stuff on the walls, like stuff that he's messed around with. Uh, these are some of the suggestions I have <clears throat> for you. Um, these long cast shadows seem like he's indoors, so he doesn't have much bounce light. Uh, so yeah, it definitely feels like he, he has a window nearby or some kind of sewer window and he's just underground or something like that. I really don't know who the character is, if he's already in like a show or anything like that, but this is something that I wanted to recommend for this. Um, okay, so when it comes to lips, there's a really defined geometry. I will do a whole dedicated day on lips. I'll have you guys uh, submit some stuff. Uh, not for a while because I'm a little bit uh, overwhelmed right now with all the work I have to do. Especially for the, uh, well, maybe maybe soon, actually, uh, because I'm already done with the, with the challenge descriptions. Um, but the core geometry of lips comes from the shapes, uh, the, 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 sh the cylinder. And when you learn how to shade a cylinder in a form of study, you'll learn how to shade shapes. So this is how I teach all my private students. So we have two cylinders, one on top of the other, both responding to a nearby light source. If the light source was top down, um, you guys can see my screen and everything, right? Yeah. Uh, then half of this cylinder would be in shadow. And this whole half right here. And half of this cylinder would be in shadow. And this whole half. So this is exactly what lips do, except that you're sculpting now. So you have to take away some pieces. you got to give it a cupid's bow. This cupid's bow has got to come here. Everything else dimples up on the sides of the lips. Uh, so you've got these, like, dimples. And if we were to draw the, um, the contour lines around them, that like edge loop, I think it's called, you can understand that the corners of the lips dimple into the face, into pits. So now you have two really, really important shadows. So let me start using a different color. Two really important shadows, one core shadow for the top lip and one core shadow for the bottom lip. Then you've got this extreme edge that you need to keep intact because it's one object in front of the other. And if you don't know enough about your edges, I have a lot of videos. Again, just go to my video list and search in my videos edges and you'll just find all the topics. Like I've been trying to name them all according to the topics I discuss. Um, just search edges and I'm sure you'll find somewhere in there where I describe all the different kinds of edges and how to render with edges instead of rendering with small detail. But this is essentially what you guys need to remember, these really, really important components. The edges of the lips over here, unless she's wearing extremely dark makeup, there aren't any edges like this in the real world. There is sometimes a white line. Some people have it, some people don't. just depends on your reference. Uh, but a lot of you, what you guys do is draw the lips symbolically. So you over-outline um, the lips on the top side. You guys also outline the bottom lips. You forget about these edges right here and you hope for the best. You just keep throwing shadow and light wherever you think it belongs and you hope it looks right. 
Then there's like the natural state of lips. Um, sometimes you guys have a cartoony overlap and you have this tail on either side of the lip, which really doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> the lip itself is just two cylinders on top of each other. That line, that tail that you guys have, is simply coming out of this cartoony influence that you come from, either, either anime or, or some, some kind of Western style. But I need to locate all of these important shadows. So you've got an edge, you've got two core shadows, and you've got radial shading. Someone list those down for me. Write those back to me. What are the three most important things about lips that you have to remember? These values are all so dark. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just grayscale this painting. I'm going to go ahead and grayscale it. Color. Um, so, pop out the chat so I can see you guys better. Alright. Sorry, I don't want to have to... Um, Spend too much time choosing around your colors. I'm just going to grayscale it for the sake of the demonstration. So the top lip is all, always darker than the bottom lip as well. So add that to the list. Core shadows and radial shading. The edge of one lip on top of the other. And the fact that the upper lip is darker than the lower lip. So we start off with that. Then we're going to give this one its, its value. And it's going to be just a little bit less. We've got cylinder one and cylinder two. Let me raise the, um, my, that's very, very small. Okay, and then we've got the edge, so I'm going to grab a really, really, uh, defined Photoshop brush, like a hard round brush from Photoshop, and I'm going to make this edge happen. Okay, so we've got one object stacking in front of the other, just like the edge on either side of the nostril, which you've used as lines, uh, um, we, we have this really, really sharp edge. We don't have a, we have a, like a separation between the plane of the nostril and the cheek. So that's why we have this super sharp edge. All right. I'm going to place in two dots that should have been placed early on in the painting to signify the edges of the lips for you. Now, really quickly, what I'm going to do is just apply the cast shadows. So the cast shadow of the lower lip, descending radially just around here, and the cast shadow of the upper lip. So it's also a cast shadow on the cylinders and a highlight. So if you remember the two cylinders stacked on each other, half of the top of top cylinder on the, the, the top lip cylinder is going to be in light. So this happens as well for the top lip. It's not exempt. Just because it's darker doesn't mean it gets it doesn't get illuminated, even if it's overlapping your cupid's bow. That outline around the cupid's bow should always be illuminated anyway. We'll get that uh, outline back. It feels like you took off a lot of the lips. No, just leave it exactly as, you, as, as, as it looks. And then the light on the top lip. Uh, sorry, top of the bottom lip. The light at the top, or the top half of the bottom lip. And then I'm just going to radially descend starting with a really large brush and the first brush stroke may seem like nothing keep it like that you're not supposed to get a lot of feed off the first brush stroke so that whole like cat lip effect you were going for for the lips I'm overdoing this so you can see the demonstration I'll obviously bring this down she is very pale but that cat lip that you were going for that kawaii thing um, you're still getting it back but you're getting a realistic version of it if you're rendering a face, you're expected to have some level of realism, especially if you're going for this full eye render. Okay, so we're dimpling the lips upward. She has that smile, but only at the corner of her lips now. And then we've got light just underneath the top lip because it's part of the stuff that faces upward. I'm also going to darken half the face. You missed out on one really important uh, core shadow. So a lot of you have really, really similar issues. A lot of you just have issues with your with your geometry. And unless, unless like, I don't know, someone's just forcing you on your computer to just study shapes for a good month, you're never going to get better at, at seeing shapes in, in, in your references and breaking stuff down and drawing like Crown Prince or Ilya Koshinov or whatever the hell he is. 
Everyone's crazy about him. And the reason why they are is because he spent time studying his, his forms. And he's fa managed to find a good balance between the symbolic silhouette of anime style with the realistic execution of, of, of form. So he's combined the two. That's why his work is so appealing. It's kept the, 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 the anime intact and has delivered the charm of, of light, light on form. So if you want to be just like him, if, you want to, if you're you aspiring to be an anime artist who has that realistic touch, please shade some spheres. Please do some, some uh, organic form studies. I really want to show off his work because I saw him today for his session. And um, my student, Pavel, sent me the most beautiful form studies I have ever seen in my life. Um, they're so wonderful. And these are these are an example. I'm so sorry, Pavel. I'm probably embarrassing you, but these are so beautiful. They're so gorgeous. I, I just kept complimenting him. And this is probably his his sixth, maybe fifth form study. I'm really not sure. Uh, we're about five sessions in, and or six sessions in. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, he's he's managed to really round off his knowledge of how to radially shade, radially, radially ascend. He's understood his cylinder, what happens to the gradient of the cylinder if it gets narrow at the top and widens at the bottom, uh, how to cast shadows, how to keep the light environment balanced between the background color, the highlight color, the mid-tone, and the shadow. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that helps, that transfers back into this, that transfers back into portraits. So this is what I mean by an organic form study blobs. These, these, this is what I mean. You're actually shading realistic blobs. This is how you deconstruct your dependency on the symbol and not draw a symbol, curly little lip symbol for, 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 for a mouth. And this is how you start rendering real believable lips that are actually stacking on each other. You have to improve on your geometric vocabulary, your visual vocabulary um, in geometries. This isn't funny business. This isn't some kind of optional study. No, this is exactly what I assign all my students. This is what got me to the level that um, I can critique so quickly and, and, and over time is because I know I can depend. It's not some kind of like uh, something you're born with. Either you have it or you don't. No, you build on you. You build this, this, this visual vocabulary. It's a language and artists have this language. Good artists have this language. And if you're not you know, if you think you can get away a long time with symbol, symbolic dependency and you manage to find stuff that looks half good, you're not going to get away with it for a long time and you're going to notice a weakness in your work. This is why we do form studies so we can de deconstruct our, our symbols and stop seeing stuff as labels. Start seeing the face as a building. Start seeing lips as the simple architectural uh, stacking of two cylinders. So you see how we got the top of the lip back? and that's fine. We didn't need to outline the lip, but you guys panic. As soon as you lay down a core shadow, you think, oh my god, that's it. I lost my line. It's all over. Everybody go home. It's not like that, and you guys have to let go of this dependency on, on your lines. It's small. It, something as, as, as small as lips is, is affected by a form study. All right, I blended out the eyebrows as well. You drew them symbolically. What I'm going to do is run one more time a lighten a lighten brush stroke on top of everything so I can just not have to draw, render her as if she has lipstick on. Makeup can a little bit uh, hide your skills or lack of skills. So I'm just gonna just uh, radially descend into the pits of the, uh, the lip corners. Blending out the outsides. If you haven't picked up a smudge brush Please, 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 for your own benefit, pick up a smudge brush. Learn how to rearrange your paint. Don't always depend on the color picker. It invites you to bring in more colors, more value. Sometimes what we choose is all we need. And don't rush into the, into the shine of the lip. Don't rush into it so quickly. There's also a cast shadow. See how I decreased contrast a lot? I'm going to bring it back now, just around the nose as well. But that's it. This is the only order for the lips. Just imagine two cylinders, the edge of the top lip on the bottom lip. The, um, the top half has, of every cylinder, the top half has a highlight and the bottom half has a shadow. And they're all, they're all radial. Then you have two corners of the, of, the, of the mouth. And they're all having their own radial values as well. And sometimes, sometimes we've got these 
like these lines of one lip on top of the other and it's a combination of this line which is like the opening slight opening of the lip and then we've got a cast shadow and what I do with the cast shadow is I lay down a bunch of paint and then I erase away along the lip the cast shadow is just taking the shape of the bottom lip Okay, and then we're zooming out and making sure this is all radial. None of this is interrupting anything. As, as soon as you uh, introduce a line, it's just, it's like everything went backward. Okay, let me zoom out. And what I'm going to do really quickly is a new layer radially introduce a darker value for the upper lips. Remember I, I decrease the saturation, I mean the, uh, the exposure. So value number one, value number two. I'm painting on the bottom lip. It's okay. I'm going to erase it away. And this is just rendering. This is that small brush rendering, uh, bringing in more contrast as you need it, zooming out, reassessing. The lips are not bone, they are not a nose, they don't have cartilage, they don't have any of that structural uh, rigidity of the other features, which is why it's hard to paint them. You have to make sure you have a base geometry that's as circular as the lips are, that's circular as the lips need it to be, and that's the shape of a cylinder. So I just brought in some more contrast, and now the lips look a little bit more believable. A lot more believable. I don't like the shape originally they were drawn in, so I'm going to clean that up. It's a little bit symbolic, so I'm just going to ease up on that shape. So do you guys have any questions? <coughs> Cylinders, radial shading, and core shadows. Excellent. One second, please. Okay, and depending on the contrast everywhere else is really low, low uh, resolution. I'm sorry, I have nothing, uh, have, I have nothing uh, larger to work with, but um, depending on the contrast used everywhere else on the face, you can't bring in these super darks around the lips. Uh, the lips need to stay relatively low contrast compared to the eyes. Not as low contrast as everything else is supposed to be, but definitely not at the contrast level of the eyes. So this is why now, after everything is said and done, we have to zoom out and uh, just make sure we're not bringing in alien values that don't belong there. The contrast is, belongs to the focal point. And you see this upper lip, this, uh, this shadow that originated from the, the radial descent? I'm going to connect that all the way up. So it really feels like it belongs to the face. A lot of you draw lips that look like they don't belong to the face. They look like they're magazine cutouts. And I'm just bringing this. This is the face I'm working with. It is a very small mouth. Um, I'm going to enlarge it in a second because it's a little bit too small. You got away with it as a symbol when it was a line drawing and a colored lines. But you're not going to get away with that for a... Uh, a realistic drawing. Radial shading for the chin. By the way, I fixed that edge work around the nose. And then finally, I'm going to bring in that super shine across the, uh, the cupid's bow. Just like that. Nothing too small. Again, I'm not trying to contest the eyes. Alright, a little bit of shine here and there. Um, a little tip that I have for you guys is, I'm not sure you've noticed, if you've noticed this, but as artists we have to notice it. Females have mustaches, okay? We have them. We lie and we bleach them and we wax them and we do stuff to them. But we have mustaches. And sometimes when we're painting a face, we kind of forget to include them. We, we do forget to include them. Just like we don't, we forget to include uh, the shadows underneath the eyes and the eye bags, a healthy amount of eye bags under every kind of eye. 
there's always an eye bag. It's just the extra skin needed to, have, to allow the eye to blink. But yeah, mustache, uh, women have, have mustaches. So what we do is we just bring in just a little bit, just the smallest amount around. It's not a full mustache, okay? So it's not as dark as hair that's um, kind of surfaced uh, from this above the skin. It's just the smallest little drop in value and it makes the lips feel very, very believable. Right, so that's a little tip. It's something I've been using on all the characters I draw. I've been drawing males a lot lately, so that doesn't count, but you know what I mean. I'm just going to enlarge the mouth so it fits her age. She did have a mouth that was too small for her age. <clears throat> Guys, don't listen to her. I have no faults. <laughs> we all have mustaches. I have one right now. Nice old peach fuzz. <laughs> we all have them, okay? We are animals. We have some. Okay, so the lips feel a little bit uh, large, but they also feel very nice. I'm not sure. I'm just going to fix the perspective, maybe. On the looks. Now they feel like they're sitting flat. All women have them, and it, the, it's a really nice little touch to have that. It shows maturity in your design. Try it. Try some mustaches above some lips. I feel like you guys are going to overdo it because I gave you the green light, but, but we really do. We, we've got some, all right? Not enough to feel if, you, if we get kissed or anything, but if, you're, if, if we're under the sun in just the right angle, <laughs> you will see it. Okay, and then the whole face itself is too low. So I'm just going to raise this. Everyone who's got a mustache, right, one. I don't know. Some people are really hairless, so lucky bastards. Right, so I'm just raising this. The nose needs to be a little less long, and the lips need to sit higher on the face. So that was the issue we had earlier. Right, the lips can have a lot more contrast. I just don't want to give the green light for contrast. I don't want to instruct a, a long contrast. I want to be very cautious with the amount of contrast I show you I use. It's very dangerous. Um, it's probably the the, the, the the biggest threat to your to your painting. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna get the eyelids a little bit more corrected. I, would, I can leave the nose alone. The nose is one of those things, I've discussed it before, that you can get away with um, as, as very small. If you wanted to enlarge the nose, you can, but it's one of those things that I say you can get away with it. It doesn't have to be uh, realistically large. If you wanted to have an unusually beautiful, almost sickly beautiful character, you wanted to go for that um, uh, style where it's not 100% realistic, uh, and you do that with proportions. That's what I was mentioning Ilya Koshinov for. I'm really, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering his name, um, but uh, he does shrink the nose a little bit too much. He enlarges the eyes a little bit too much. He shrinks the mouth and makes it a little bit too plump. Um, and but he gets away with it. That's why I'm saying there's an anime silhouette. This per I want to honor the fact that this this student went for the anime silhouette. By silhouette I mean um, like this standard. This this is what I mean by silhouette. Um, so I want to honor that. But you can execute realism in all of these. You can keep the exact ratio. These 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 exact sizes. Um, while while keeping everything realistic. So no, whoever's saying that the nose has to be shrunken, no it doesn't. It can be kept exactly where it is. As long as you paint realistically the features, you can mess around with the sizes as much as you want. Okay, so I'm going to flatten that. <clears throat> and send that over to you. Let me show you the before and after. I didn't bring in any excess contrast. Again, be careful with that. If you do have to bring it, you can bring it around the edges of the mouth. Some more highlights. Let me show you real quick where I would bring them. The highlights are built radially, just at the very, very top of the lower lip, and then the, the darks would be probably around the corners only. 
And this is pretty much how dark I'd go. I wouldn't go any darker than this. Okay. And if you had to make her lips uh, with, a, with, a, with a color to them, with makeup, then you make them darker as a whole. So makeup means color. Color means a drop in value. <clears throat> so multiply actually is much better. So the darker we go, the redder the lips get. Okay. All right, so that's lipstick getting added on. It just means darker and darker and darker. All right. So before view image image size, I think I made it fifteen hundred. And after I darkened, uh, I mean I desaturated it. Okay, so now we have, we don't have the smirk, but we have a more believable lip. All right, if you had to make her smirk, I do have a video on expressions. What is involved in making an expression? Um, the character now looks neutral. I'm not sure if this angry eyebrow was intended and if this smirk was intended. It doesn't feel like it was intended. It feels like you were going for a smile. The smile was very, almost exactly, uh, exactly this. That, okay, so, um, yeah, be careful with that. But if you would, did want to smile, if you did want to make her look evil, try to really go into designing the eyebrow to be evil. Having a weight in the eyebrows, instead of drawing them to only move, uh, downward on the inner corner of the eyebrow. Move the entire eyebrow structure lower if you really wanted to go for that. But I do I do discuss this extensively in the expressions video that I've that I've posted before. And then the mouth would be moving up this way. And when mouths smile, they dimple, meaning they wrinkle fat of the cheek gets in the way. If you wanted that same kind of evil smile, oops, equivalent. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to just flatten that for you. I do like to save the neutral versions, but We'll see. And then we have the same exact issue, but now you've got a reference and you still kind of over, over outline the lips. This is why I say even like neutral lips especially, there is a defined softness around them. They don't just have this edge around them. This is a gradual conversion of, not, of a face skin cells into the lips uh, skin cells. So they don't just instantly change right away. movie really bothered me watching this movie. This is the Boleyn girl or was it the um, girl with a pearl earring? I forget. Probably the Boleyn girl. I didn't like that movie at all. It freaked me out. Okay, so I'm just laying down those shadows and as you can see the exact same cast shadows I've discussed before. We've got half of this lip in shadow and the upper half in light. So let me get that Cupid's bow to look a little bit more similar to it. She's got a wider Cupid's bow at the thickness of her septum. Usually this the, the, the Cupid's bow is kind of just matches the thickness of the septum right up here somewhere. The thickness of this between the two nostrils is a th it's like a little square, a rectangle. Okay, so this whole area is just drowned in light. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to Throw some light on top of that whole upper area. This half of the, see that mustache? Do you guys see it? Do you see the drop in value? You just gotta look at the slider. Up here, down there, and then kind of like back up. Okay, sorry, there's many pixels. Then you've got a little bit of the Cupid's bow here. 
And then now we do the shadows, shadow of the bottom lip. The shadow, the whole lip, the whole bottom lip that you did wasn't was in light. And that's not accurate. What? Ossie! She's been so weird. Okay, then you've got these outlines. I talked to you already about the layering of the upper lip and the bottom lip when the lip is half open. And I'm just going to do that trick with the layer again. Um, so, first layer, second layer, and the light's coming from the top right, so everything's pointing that way. And then slowly moving into the darkest dark. Okay, like I said, you guys jump into the highlights way too soon. You're supposed to be building these up radially. Let me erase first. And just directly above the highlight is the cast shadow of the upper lip on the rest of the lip. And blend, blend, blend. It's not bone, it's not cartilage, it's just two fleshy cylinders. And they're not even dense cylinders. Okay, the outer corners. You even have this tail out here. This cartoony tail. A lot of you have these symbols in there, and if you don't have geometries to help you deconstruct these symbol dependencies that you have, you're always going to draw these, these half realistic, almost there, it's not intermediate, still beginner kind of drawings. Sorry, it's just the truth. If you don't do the hard work, if you don't do the fundamentals, if you don't think about the sciences and the formulas, you're going to be stuck in mediocrity for the rest of your life. If you really want to make punch people in the face when you see when they see your art, you just want to like punch them in the gut and they're like, "Wow, look at that!" Wow! If you want to get that reaction, it takes a little bit of hard work. It doesn't have to be grueling work. It doesn't have to be. What do they call them? What do they call the that work that grinds your shins off. I don't know what they're, it's like a torture machine from the <laughs> Middle Ages. Basically they put people to work till they're, anyway, it doesn't have to be that kind of work. You don't have to grow up with blisters. It's just uh, working efficiently. So a combination of soft brush, a combination of good uh, understanding of the surface texture and the, and the material of the lip, an understanding of the general, very very general and easy kindergarten level shape geometries, cylinders and cubes. It doesn't have to be uh, some sort of advanced shape with an advanced scientific name. No, 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 you're not expected to memorize every muscle sci every muscle group and its scientific name. No. Anyone who, who flashes their muscle memorization at you, just tell them you wasted a lot of time, buddy. It's just a simple geometry, and it's a question of whether or not you're using them. Then you've got the darkness of the upper lip, so I'm just going to just going to try to figure out how to apply this. <clears throat> okay. So she's not really smiling and she has too much shadow out here which is bringing in that disgusted expression. That's what happens. Yes, work smart, not hard. Exactly. I mean, working smart is working hard as well. See these two white outlines on either edge of the lip? And the white outline on the side. And I'm not doing anything structural, it's all over blended. It's all the let the more you blend, the more you infer the illusion of the texture of the lips and not actually trying to render the lips so forwardly as we try to render the nose. The nose we get away with it because it does have rigidity to it. Half this face, half this part of the face here is it. Sorry, one moment please. Okay. <clears throat> so right now we have to do that last step which is the radial shade outward connecting the lips into the face 
I fit, the lips you draw are a little bit asymmetrical. So I'm going to try to correct that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the photograph. No, no, no. As long as you've captured the form signatures, it doesn't have to be exact. And then just like before, we don't really draw in the top corner of the lip. All we do is just get the highlight and it defines the high point. The Cupid's bow highlight defines the high point. So just up here somewhere with a thicker brush, not so small. The eyes are what should be rendered the most. That's why we do the illusion of texture, not the actual texture itself. And I'm delaying the use of the dark spots as much as possible. of this lip and you see how they dimple up into a line at the end into this uh, this line right here so I want to show you the full extent of, of you know, the benefit of these forms so bear with me usually it's like this one I have to work with a photograph for you guys it takes a little longer and I'm just blending out the uh, the dimples on either side of the nose. I'm gonna try to fix that asymmetry so she doesn't look um, disgusted. When we have one lip curled higher than the other, one half lip of the upper lip. So if one half of the upper lip is curled higher than the other, we end up getting that disgusted look. And just over here, I feel like the way you're blending is with way too much contrast. Your edges should be softer around fleshy areas. You should have wider gradients around fleshy areas. Where we have all these blend, look at all these like flawless gradients blending into each other and you've got these really, really defined edges around the cheeks. That's really not going to help you pull off that realistic look. Also that texture in the background, please, please, please get rid of it. That's um, bringing in this, uh, you bring that later in an overlay layer if you wanted to create the canvas texture. You bring that in later. Just over here, you've got that shadow. It's not nearly as important as the rest of the face, but can't resist the cast shadow. Oh my, these, these resolutions you guys are giving me are so low. And then we've got some edges. So we're going to get that zoom back out. We're going to get the um, hard edge brush from Photoshop and create an edge along the top lip so it's not blending into the bottom lip. That edge is really important. I'm going to get some dots to designate the edge of the lip, corners of the lips. Just like that. That's just going to tell me, hey, the lips stop here and radiation should descend, uh, ascend out of this spot. And then we've got this area here connecting into that. And this is when we're bringing in, this is when we're rendering, bringing in the, the smallest values. And we blend outward. We don't blend down. We're blending out a little bit. I'm using this this brush that I used as well for my latest painting, number four, and the smudge pack. It's okay if you blend out the value. You're not supposed to be keeping it. You bring in new values when you radially introduce the edges. And again with this texture, just getting rid of that. Lips are not, they're not always covered in lip gloss. 
You shouldn't always render them as if they are. Really low opacity, large brush, first brush stroke, second, third, and my brush just keeps shrinking as I bring in more darkness. Same thing over here. Oh, I hate summertime. It's always these fruit flies that just spawn out of Satan's asshole. Okay, and then just around along here. We have the edge, the curling of that edge right here. So this lip compared to the over render of the eyes that's going to happen, they're exactly where they need to be. They don't have to be super edged out. They don't have to be at the level of the eyes. The red background seems a risk to throw off the value color adjustments. Um, the red background seems a risk to throw off. I don't know what you mean. Fixing it is a risk or keeping it is a risk? And then we're going to grab the value color of the light source and we're going to radially climb that up and just take a look at what happens. The lips just, they just become born. And remember, where does saturation happen? It doesn't happen on highlights. It happens. It doesn't happen on shadows. It happens on midtones. Just the long hair. All these midtones is where we get them. Just over here. under the lip. Again, we reserve these darkest values for the very end of the painting. Finishing this up. Her lips are very, very weird. see that green on the upper lip? That's because there's hair there. So I'm just going to bring that green in just by desaturating. And then finally I'm going to shrink my brush, increase my opacity, and just do what uh, what's going to push the detail level. So I'm going to get a dark cool red by my side over here. And then now we do those last little touches, that like two, two hairs width brush. A tiny little brush. Still zoomed out though. These are really high impact brush strokes. We're not going to be um, doing the entire process zoomed out or trying to make some large choices zoomed out. We won't know what we're doing unless we're zoomed in. I mean, I mean, uh, sorry, shit. The exact opposite of what I just said. <laughs> the stupid fly is just flipping annoying. So we make the major mis major choices we make zoomed out. And uh, only we only zoom in when we know there's a good foundation that we've established uh, zoomed out. Then we zoom in. God, my brain is like, I tell it, hey, say something that's right. It says the opposite of what I need. Well, okay. It's not what I meant. One second, please. Okay. So I need to do some more of that upper lip highlight. Just up there, and then that highlight going across the lip, getting that color, and then the uh, the outline for the upper lip, Cupid's bow. I think the Cupid's bow you drew is also very strong edge-wise. You're using contrast and edges. You should be doing the opposite, especially if the photograph is telling you something. No, it's not style. It's more of an anxiety factor. You want to make sure you have the read for your time. 
and the effort you put in, and you really don't need to be worrying about that. All you need to be worrying about is whether or not you've captured the signature of the form. I mean, that's what you're drawing. The form is the subject you're drawing. So I'm going to do a little bit of stylistic. I mean, it's such low contrast. I mean, low resolution. But I'm going to do some stylistic overblending here on the sides. And then some use of my soft brush. <clears throat> My style isn't in change, my style doesn't affect or change the, the genetic identity of the object and the forms, so form signatures. My style is just, you know, which edges am I keeping um, that are optional? Am I bringing in just a touch more contrast? So the lips are a little bit altered compared to the reference, and that's forgivable. They're not a new object. See, the detail is introduced very, very delicately. And it would never succeed if we didn't spend time on our form. Okay, so is there any questions? Are there any questions for this uh, demonstration? So the background is too red making everything look green where it should be looking gold. She's wearing gold, not green. And if you did drop tool the exact colors that you found in here, they're looking green because there's too much red over here. Let me show you real quick. We chose this color. We're going to slide up on the slider just a little bit toward the yellow. It's already starting to look green compared to that red. Now let's desaturate and then move up into yellow, just yellow. Look how green it looks. This is yellow, we're not even in green yet. This is green, this is yellow. But it looks green compared to the red. And that's because they're complementary tones. I'm just darkening this one last time. There's light on the inside of that lower lip. Just like that. That whole uh, setup, um, this whole canvas texture you've got going on is, is a bit of a mistake. That's a big mistake. All right, I'm going to grab that sunlight color again on the tip of her nose and just introduce those last minute textures on her lip. Her lips are a very strange shape. They're kind of asymmetrical. So there you go. Light, dark, light, dark. Edge from the top lip on the bottom lip. Radial edges on the sides. And fuzzed out everything. Everything has to be fuzzy. It's not cartilage. It doesn't have any bone underneath it other than the teeth and they're not really affecting the, you know, the chemical or biological composition of the lip. Okay, you have a little bit of asymmetry all around the face. Um, I think you should be working on the eyebrows as well. The eyebrows should be in there. You need a smudge brush in your life as soon as possible. Kind of seems like you were working with a mouse. I'm not really sure because I'm seeing some of these really, um, like really raw brush strokes, but I could, could be wrong. Could just be that you don't have pen pressure on, or you just have transfer on. But whoever did this good job working with a reference, I think you should um, be shouldn't be so hasty. Um, trying a photo reference like this, you should try just a grayscale uh, painting of just the face leaving the background nice and gray. These are all studies. You're studying. As long as you're having issues with geometric anatomy, you are uh, studying. The edge of the face is always fuzzy. There's tiny little hairs on the edge of the face. And then you've got core shadows all across that far half. This half right here is all core shadow.
And we really need the um, the eyebrows back. And they're a little more yellow than green. Or green compared. They're very gold. Um, so that's the demonstration for today. Sorry I don't have time to complete it com uh, fully, but let's take a look to see if there are any questions. All right, Mr. Brack, wouldn't the lip highlight have a slightly different color of the nose highlight? No. It's the same light source. It's specularity. Specularity, though it can happen in different degrees, is still reflecting in specularily, specularily the light source's identity. I thought you would talk about this red background a, lot, background a lot sooner. It's the first thing that shocked me. I feel like it's throwing off the light and all the colors. Well, this is a you know this is a, an attempt at bringing out this, um, I guess a photorealistic attempt. So I'm, I'm focusing on lips today. It's not really about composition or anything like that. Um, uh, why do we not have the shadows on the left side of the lips uh, on our drawing? Why do we not have the shadows on the left side? Well, if the light is coming from the top right, then the shadows would be on the left. If the, sh if the, and the opposite, vice versa. And then if it's top down, all the shadows point down. Denise, Demerchi, this, this, the, the example I showed you guys today is if the light was uh, top down. This is almost always the standard that I, that I uh, provide. All right, half this lip is gonna be darker the light is at an angle now that I looked away um, but yeah I think that's it for today I don't see any more um, any more uh, questions uh, good luck to the person who tried this please decrease the saturation of the background turn off that texture and change the color into something like this a little bit more of a purpley red or a maroon or a or brown or something like that <clears throat> like somewhere here, one of that, one of those values. Um, yes, I'm feeling a little sick. I don't think I can finish up today. I just wanted to mention for this one really quickly uh, that the red, uh, the, that's, I'm so lost. Uh, the neck is extremely thick. So I was picking red. The neck is very thick. So it needs to be a lot thinner. Unless she's a steroid taking WWE Chris Cyborg type of female you really don't need a thick neck she seems to be like some sort of dancer All right so a thinner neck definitely I need to do some more no this is gonna be wrong wrong layer <clears throat> Filter, liquefy. Oh my gosh, I can barely breathe. Just pushing that neck in. A little bit too much musculature around the neck, making it look very manly. So just ease up on that, soften it up a little. The neck is not that significant. I fear to be over rendering it. The water is translucent and there's a lot of sunlight. So we need some subsurface scattering on the water. Subsurface scattering happens along shadows. So wherever there's a shadow, instead of a shadow, we've got saturation and illumination. I've done a whole video on it. All right, and um, the head size is a little small. That's because your canvas size is short. Okay, so we've got a small little head. Now it seems to be balanced. Let's 
seems to be. Go to isterac.com and join the community. Um, if you want my brushes, if you want any of the smudging brushes I mentioned, they're available in my store. Go to the community and uh, click on this little button. It'll take you to the community. Read the rules before you post in the About community. Uh, please read the rules. Um, I hate to ban people. Um, and uh, the, the resource packs are going to be up by tonight. They're going to be up... Um, oh, come on filter all posts. They're going to be up over here. I'm going to pin the post to the top of the community wall. Download your, uh, I was going to have a link to the download of the of the resource pack which is going to be available in the community. So the download link is going to be right over there. And um, that's it. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.